we've been, uh, give you a quick rundown. We talked to Ulysses for a little bit about some of his interests, and he's, he is a former graduate of the old Armstrong and um, high school, and uh, he works a lot in database work, he's done work for a lot of companies, and he got interested in looking at government data with recovery.gov, and then workforce data, and worked, tried to work with um, Congressman Bobby Scott on that, and um, also the sequestration, sequestration data, which is kind of interesting. Um, but he's, as you said, become more interested in the city and, and um, its numbers and data and, and trying to see what it's doing with this technology. Um, we agree that the PDFs are hard to deal with, and, and a lot of the stuff, especially the budget numbers, are only the summaries, which isn't very helpful. He's also kind of tired of these politicians who are behaving more like celebrities. And he spoke at the last council, as he said, and he, he agreed with me that there's problems with the city's IT in terms of silos, um, and there's, you know, we're still looking at the idea of What's going to happen with that? Let's pick up 2A, the next meeting day. The 6th is not going to work for Scott. Which is the, sat the first Saturday in April. Okay. Um, I think any time is good for me. I think my uh, farming and urban gardening place is up in the of March. So. Okay. Are you not clear on the following Saturday yet? The following, well, I'll, it's, it's, I'll say right now is the ninth. The ninth? Or the first oh, sorry. Excuse me. April 13th. April 13th. Right. And we'll go with 12.30. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you know if that changes. Good. Right now. All right. Uh, and then next would be item 3A, selection of president, vice president, and treasurer. Are we ready to do that? I think so. I think we are, uh, but I guess question, um, we had to find that officers, or, or that the, for instance, does the treasurer have to be one of the four of us? No. Um, are you okay with being designated treasurer? That's what I'm most comfortable with. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm ha I, I think if we can do all four within the four of us, I think that's yeah. that's great. And that, otherwise, we set ourselves up for that, some that issues. That's kind of my you know, thinking on it. Um, so what I open open it up for president. Is there a nomination for president? I'll nominate Rick for president. All right. Any other nominations? Can I nominate Scott for <laughs> vice president? <laughs> uh, well, let's, um, all right. Oh, Let, I let's don't want to have to find yeah, some yeah, yeah, let's uh, close nominations for president. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. You're now the president. You want to take over the meeting? Sure. That's, uh, that's, is that is that a uh, yeah? That, uh, that's that's a role that I will now play. Yeah, you're the presiding officer. All right. Well, then um, uh, do we have a motion for vice president? I would nominate. Yeah, do you want to? You you, you had right. oh, okay. nominate Scott for vice president. I second that. And then we'll go ahead and close. And uh, so we'll close that. Uh, Call that question, uh, Scott Berger for Vice President. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and that leaves us with one uh, remaining position to fill. Or anybody uh, have any uh, motions for treasurer? All nominated silver person here for treasurer. I'll accept that nomination. <laughs> any, any seconds? Second. Oh. And they were, um, so we'll. Close, close, the no close the nominations and uh, call the question. Um, all in favor of Silver Pressing as treasurer of the federal government, Richmond? Aye. 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 
So once everybody says I, I don't have to ask for names, right? Because right? that's a given. Right. Okay. Right. Um, well, then uh, we have uh, closed that uh, A of unfinished business. Um, can we define that the discussion on the Redskin Training Center has been completed? Um, yeah. I'd like to make this one little statement about information. I, I don't know if we've actually finished about the Planning Commission of Correct. We didn't. Um, whether the Planning Commission has authority to consider development on state land or non-city land and supposedly the city attorney has advised either the commission or members of the commission that it is legal but your request to Rodney Poole for documentation of that was denied. Due to client permit. Attorney client privilege. And now, the problem I have with that is that that's, I'll pass this around, that's the part of the code. The following records are excluded from the provisions of this chapter, but may be disclosed by the custodian in his discretion, except where such disclosure is prohibited by law. Yeah, it's that discretion. Right. And the way I understand this, that that is a public record. It, it is. It is not required to disclose it, it's at the discretion of the person that has possession of it, has custody of it. I don't know whether that's the Planning Commission, I don't know whether that's Rodney Poole, but in either case, we don't know, and what Rick got was from a public information officer in the Planning Department. Isaac Marks. Right. The, the, the Planning Commission has not voted to withhold that information. Um, well, that, that, that's my only point. That who's, who's the custodian? Is that the Planning Commission in total? It, it depends on who. If it was sent to Rodney Poole, it should have been sent to all the rest. So I, I guess you have to assume that it went to the commission. And they're, they're asserting that it's attorney-client, they're invoking attorney-client privilege according to the press op, to the information officer. And the way I read this, the, the commission would have to decide whether they want to withhold it. Well, all right, so we have that question. My question to y'all is, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to um, shop it around some of the uh, lawyers' offices and see where they say it is, legal advice? Or do you want to, you know, where, where are we go from here? Well, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm just kind of filling in and that some is, of the blanks on the inform, on the information, I don't know where to go with it. Well, that's what I'm saying is, is should, should, I mean, I'd be willing to put forward a motion that, that we that we investigate this by um, requesting legal advice on, on state law. <laughs> One of the, uh, the people that was, that I uh, copied on my original request, and since the information officer, Mr. Isaac Smarts or whatever, did not send it, I did send it to Chris Hilbert, and I had copied him on my original request for the information, I sent it to Mark Olinger, I copied Alan Jackson, and I copied Chris Hilbert. And then the information that was sent back to me saying attorney client privilege was sent by the guy in the planning commission just to me directly and then copied Alan Jackson. So I forwarded it to Chris saying, just and that, as an FYI, 
Um, and Wayne suggested at one point possibly asking Mr. Poole whether he would fess up to what was given, and I, it's my feeling that he wouldn't because he gave me a smart-ass, roll-your-eyes um, answer in, um, in the Planning Commission meeting to begin with, um, and yet then I did have a very substantive uh, after-the-meeting conversation with Doug Cole, who might be someone who could be asked, and conceivably based on what Wayne is putting here, might feel that he could say that they did or did not receive that information, which if Mr. Poole gets it, everybody's supposed to get it, then he would have got it. I, I, I guess where I am at this point, that this has got my attention enough that it, we certainly ought to explore it among ourselves a little bit more to think about what to do with it because the, the Invoking this attorney-client privilege, it is rampant right. in City Hall. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. This is, I mean, just take this out of the whole Redskins milieu there and just say, I just go, go to someone um, who's in FOIA, um, state FOIA agencies and say, look, you know, how, what, how do you interpret this? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of keeping this active and looking at it some more and finding out what we can do with it. Right. I, I, I will make the motion that this question of the state law interpretation as well as the um, economic, economic, economic numbers in terms of the um, Department of Economic Development, that those two questions still be held open in terms of the Redskins Training Center controversy and leave it at that. I second that. Any discussion on that? Are you guys uh, hear about the citizen comment period? The woman who said she requested a, a grand jury? Yeah. Is that Ms. Agnew? Special grand jury, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She okay, yeah. says she's waiting to hear something from Harry on that. Yeah. And that special grand jury would be going to asking Jane Farrar about trees? or? I just, just looking into the whole matter of uh, the Redskins development. Yeah. Yeah, which so. would then tend to lead to the discussion of the trees. Because yeah, that's one yeah, of these ideas. Yeah. Did you take a picture of the stingy tree? I have it. I've got my camera. Okay. Can it swim back by um, well, that certainly should end up giving us some information. Um, one way or the other. So, that's that so we, have, we have vote uh, on the motion to continue to look at this both in terms of the economic numbers as well as the, the legal implications uh, of uh, city involvement on state land? Well, I, I would put it strictly in terms of the state law interpretation of client attorney privilege and the question of the, the economic numbers. Yeah. I'm all in favor of that motion. Aye. 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 All right, the uh, next uh, on unfinished business, our Second Street Historic Canal Wall, uh, and the full uh, city has not fully explained these events. Last I heard, all I'm saying is um, I spoke to uh, Councilperson um, Agosto. He said that while there is supposedly a criminal and civil investigation, or civic investigation going on, there has not been a case given to the Commons Attorney yet. And he's, he, the case is waiting on the outcome of his investigations. And that's officially where, as far as I know, where it stands. <clears throat> um, I don't know, if, I can't remember if I forwarded you the letter that Nappy had printed Oof. in the uh, Times yeah, Dispatch. Well, yeah. She actually had a, I didn't forward this part, but she actually was, was didn't realize it was going to be published like that. And um, she, she had a, Heart, heart conversation, uh, email conversation with uh, Zulu about how she wasn't trying to attack him for his coverage, <clears throat> but that she was, you know, she's trying to emphasize the fact that, that, you know, a lot of people still don't know the full story mm -hmm. behind the canal. I was 
At first, I thought that Robert had used our words exclusively, and so I was concerned that Matthew was maybe giving us a hard time. And then I realized, and looked back at the words, and realized that all the things that she was concerned about weren't brought up. We had brought up, that you had brought up. So yeah. um, I didn't. I realized at that point, okay, that she was seemingly directing it at Robert for being a little too callous in his. Uh, right, and she explained to him that that wasn't the case. That she was just only a broad overview of it, but and she appreciated his coverage. So. It's all cool there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like you said, it so brings a lot of attention to the to the topic. To just wait and see what develops on this. Well, I mean, I got mixed feelings about it because certainly I, I do think that um, you know we have to let the law turn itself out, but at the same time, um, you know. There's a lot of these little things right now, man. and I don't know. I'm still curious to see what comes forward from. I've heard that they're still putting. I've heard from people that that Venture Richmond still has designs on the um, canal as far as the amphitheater goes. But I, I, can't speak. I don't know. You mean fill an Indian canal because it's in the way of the amphitheater? That was one of the original ideas. Yeah, they were going to shave it down. And the next day they were going to shave it down, and and, and we've already. You know, we've already taken a look at the sight lines and all that. They don't even do that. Do you do you feel like you understand where Parker's coming from in his personal um, investment in this issue? Is he? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think, I think Parker's uh, has has done what he can to make sure that. Um, he know, that everyone knows that no one's off the hook, <laughs> you know. But um, in terms of, of in terms of what we can do at this point, I don't know. But do you feel that if he perceives someone being let off the hook that shouldn't be let off the hook, that he's going to stay on it? Yeah, I think I think he knows that people care enough about it, and I know I know he knows that that Charles Poole, for instance, isn't going to let him off the hook. So. Um, you know, and I won't put him off the hook. So I think I think he knows that that we're vested in it, the so, issue. I guess the question is, I don't know what he can do right now without just like a Commerce attorney, in terms of without without an actual case being presented. He can't do anything without a counsel vote. Yeah, and he's not going to do that. So I'm not really sure what we can ask Parker to do at this point. Now, is this a um, police department investigation? Yes, and. Um, Charles Poole has already sent a letter to the new chief of police saying, okay, I hear you want to be in, to be in a transparent department. Where is this now? <laughs> well, maybe we see how this looks in the month. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think something's going to have to come out at some point. They're going to start construction on the amphitheater and, and, and open the road and all that good stuff. Is that intended to be done in time for the folk festival for this coming year? That's what I've heard. So we would, they would have to be moving pretty rapidly, to right? And I don't. I and I, you know, I told you the last meeting. You know how how you know it seems like everyone would rather write this still write this off as an accident, and that's not going to happen. So at this point, we won't have a motion regarding that, but this is uh, something that's still going to stay on the unfinished business. Yeah. Uh, yeah, agenda. That's, yeah. that's sound good. Okay. Uh, utility rates, the city has not released information. Originally, I, I had suggested we do a press release, joint press release with the Sierra Club, but given um, the paper's excellent coverage, I'm not sure if that's necessary. Uh, I think the, he spelled it out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no, he pretty well. <laughs> did, you, did you submit that uh, to him? Or, uh? Well, you know, Charles is getting his vote in the stuff file, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> You, at this point, do you know whether we want to pick this up again next month or you want to just wait? Well, at this point, from a better government perspective, according to what Mr. Zullo um, has interpreted, that, that the, the, the data will be released on March 12th. Now, the question for us, I think, is um, between that time and the council vote, 
has the public received this information in a timely manner that, that can give the public in time to, to, to analyze and, and maintain the fund. And was it your comment or Charles's comment that the it may be too late once the information's out because the rate analysis has already been. That was neither of our comments. That was actually um, Robert Bethel. Oh right, 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 right. And right. he's and he's okay. he's not really directly affiliated with us, but he's been we've been keeping each other in the loop, and he signed the petition. And he's he actually is has been really on the city's case as far as the twenty million from the you know from the tax payment. And so and then Robert, Mr. Bethel is. is uh, Formerly worked for the city until the department, I think, which had some sort of connection there. So he knows a lot of the ins and outs, and he knows how this is going on. I mean, between now and our next meeting, the question for me is: Do we, at, at that point, do we, do we do a press release, um, basically echoing his statement? Well, if, or would that they, be too too? On Monday, they're going to vote to set. March 12th is the date that the mayor presents the budget, right? Right. As I understand it, when the mayor presents the budget, the other data is supposed to be released also, right. available. Right. So I guess we'll just test on the 12th and see what happens. Well, and, and that's fine, and I, I'm, I'm agreeing with that. My question, I guess, is between the 12th and our next meeting. It might it might be back on the agenda. It, well, yeah, and the question is, do we do is it is it within this group's purview to release, say, a joint statement with the Sierra Club saying, hey, this information wasn't supplied in the manner that the public has had time to digest. Well, or do you think that's yeah, too? Well, I think it just. It would, it's just a question of how they releasing it or not. Well, even if they release it, and what if they turn around and, and vote on it? Um, I'd be surprised by that, but at the same time, how much time is the public going to have? I, I, maybe I was operating on an assumption I really don't have any basis for, but I was thinking that they wouldn't do a separate vote on it. That it would be part of the whole budget package. Probably handle it in May. Hey, I could be totally, I mean, I, I was just, I don't have any basis for that assumption, but that's just that's what, what I, I was thinking, is that it would be just one vote on the whole. I, I would I would think that too, but I, I guess my, so there's two parts, of the, what I'm saying is there's two parts to this. One is, one is, are they going to release the information on 12? And secondly, how are they going to handle the information going forward? Well, we could look back and see how they did the, how they handled that five or six years ago. Right. Well, what I'm saying though is, is what Mr. Bethel is warning us is that yeah. you know this could be this could this could be a, a window of opportunity that we could lose pretty quickly. Sounds like maybe we leave it on un unfinished business because we have to decide at our next meeting how they've handled it since the twelfth to determine whether it should be. Um, more substantial. Well, all, all, I guess what all I'm saying is I'm fine with, with waiting till the 12th to see what they do as far as releasing the information. But don't be surprised if I come back to you, you all via, via email and say, you know, we need to do something now. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm prepared for that. I think city council would really be playing with fire if they rush this. Okay. But that hasn't stopped them. <laughs> they, they play a lot of fire. <laughs> well, I think then um, this is prepared to be brought up in a material way if need be soon after the 12th. Yeah, this, um, the, and we do have enough people that are paying attention yeah. to the details of this. Um, yeah, watch it closely. All right. All right uh, the number, uh, letter E, City Council President. Former President uh, Graziano's letter, yeah. al allegations appear unfounded. Uh, yeah, go to line 73 in your uh, packet. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Taylor talk. All right, um, 
this is basically the same draft that you saw, I think, line 17. That's where it picks up. And starting on line 86 is where it was, um, I reworded that a little. And on line 91, where you say city council was advised of the situation, that's from an email that you sent to them? Yeah, and that's um, in the attachment. Line 105. to the Lyles and to City Council asking them. Did you get a response from anyone? No, and I sent the follow-up to the Lyles. These are in the email order. Mm -hmm. The second one is first. So I asked for a copy of his response to my first email and I have it. I didn't get a response to the original and I haven't gotten a response to my request for a copy of the response. I think about Dingham. I think about to Dingham on this one. And I, the, the line 87 sentence, um, I reworded that so that satisfies any concerns, I think. So what, what we're saying is to the city auditor, if, if he finds that these situations may have occurred, that we're asking that it be sent on. Um, let me ask, let's ask, little review here. Um, we met last time, we talked about 